If you've ever tried to create a seamless pattern for metallic textures or images, I think this video is going to save you so much time and frustration because if you're like me and you learn to make seamless patterns using the offset filter, then cloning or patching the obvious lines and just working through that offset, you know that those tools don't work for metallics and image textures. Metallics and images have a lot of inconsistencies that make it really hard to get a seamless pattern right. From light and texture variations to blur, these types of textures have all of that. So let's get into this so I can show you how I deal with these problems. So I want to talk a little bit about a seamless pattern versus just a regular pattern. So if you see this one right here, this is seamless so I can make this much smaller. So if I take this down to 50%, you don't see these obvious lines that you see here. I can even take it down to 25% and I'm not going to get any of that stuff. That's because this is a seamless texture. It's going to work on a large image or a small image and it's not going to give me these types of harsh lines. So if I do that same thing right here, obviously it's at 100% and you can already see that seam line right here. Again, 50% and it gets even worse, 25% even worse. Do so you see all of this stuff just repeating and it's really obvious where those lines are. So what I want to do is show you how to fix all of this stuff, especially with metallics and things like this, where you have such variation in texture, color, lighting, everything. It can get really complicated and really difficult. We're going to start here with an image. It is 1000 pixels by 1000 pixels. And all I did was take an image of some fur and just block out the piece that I wanted. So you can see right here, if I zoom in, we have a lot of focus on this area. It's a lot of detail versus right here where you start to get this fuzzy uh, texture on this side and I'm just going to go ahead and grab our starting pattern so edit define pattern and this is going to be before I just want to compare them when we're done here so let's go ahead and get started on fixing this and creating a seamless texture from this one so I'm going to click right here and by the way this is just a JPEG image I just dropped it in here uh, grabbed it from my computer and dragged it over that's all that is now, if your image comes in as a smart object, you'll see that little icon right here in the corner. You'll just right click somewhere over here. It'll tell you rasterize right here, rasterize layer. So the first thing I'm going to do is just zoom out a little bit and I'm going to hit the letter C on my keyboard. That's going to bring up the crop tool. That's this little icon right here. And I'm just going to use it to drag out this image to double its size. So right now it's at 1000 pixels. I'm going to drag it out to 2000 pixels. And if that gets frustrating for you, dragging and getting the exact number there, you can just come up here to image, canvas size, and then, you know, just click right here to make sure that it's going out that way. And then just change your width here. Either way is fine. So now that we have that, we can come back up here, command the letter J to make a duplicate of this, I'm going to press the letter V on my keyboard to bring up my move tool. That's this icon right here. If you don't see these anchors around here, make sure that show transform controls is on. If you're still not seeing it, you probably don't have that image selected. So I just unselected the image. It's not going to show up. I need to make sure I have my image selected and then I can just drag this over to the other side. So now you see I have this obvious line here that I need to get rid of. So I'm going to come over here, make sure that my layer is selected and I'm going to come to edit, transform, and I'm going to flip this horizontal. It still looks mirrored, but that's fine. I don't have an obvious edge and I can come back and fix all of this stuff in the middle as long as my edges are the same. So now that I have both of those, I'm going to select that top one, hold the shift key, grab that second one, command and the letter E to merge that together. I'm going to press command and J to make another copy of this and then the letter C or come back over to the crop tool. And then I'm just going to drag this down to 2000. I remember I'm just doubling the size. So it was 1000. I'm just adding another thousand in there. Hit return or enter to accept that. Letter V to go to the move tool and then drag that down. Again, very obvious. So we're just going to come over here to edit, 
transform, this time flip vertical, select that, shift, command, and the letter E to merge all of that together. And from here, I can either fix some of this stuff in the middle, make it a little bit more random, or just leave it as it is. But I'm going to actually just come in here with a spot healing tool. This is the most basic of these tools and it's the easiest to use just so that I can show you how easy it is now that we have similar depth of field, similar focus, similar colors and lighting in one area, how easy it is to change these things. And I'm just going to make sure that I'm content aware and I'm just going to color over some of these things, maybe some of these lines. We'll take them out, change this area just a little bit. All I'm doing is dragging over it so that it looks just a little bit different from the other side. And I can go through and do that with all of these. So I'm going to go ahead and leave the rest as it is. But you can come in here and uh, just make this look a little bit less like the other side. Okay, and then I'm just going to press uh, Edit, Define Pattern, and I'm just going to call this Seamless. So this is our seamless pattern. We started off with a 1000 by 1000 pixel document. We've ended up with a 2000 by 2000. So essentially doubled our pattern without affecting the quality of the image. And then you also have the benefit of having a seamless pattern as well. Now we're going to come over here and do the same thing with the metallic. This is again a 1000 by 1000 pixel basic metallic texture. It's not seamless at this point, so I'm going to come over here to edit, define pattern, and I'm just going to put this before, gold before, so we can compare them at the end. I'm just going to do the same things that we did before. So we have a 1000 pixel document. We're just going to stretch it over to 2000 pixels. Hit return or enter to accept that. Command in the letter J to make a copy, letter V on the keyboard. That's going to bring you back to the move tool. And then we're just going to put that in place. So we have this obvious seam here. So what we're going to do is come over here to edit, transform, flip vertical, and it looks much better already. So we're going to grab that top one, hold the shift key, grab the bottom one, command in the letter E to merge those. Command the letter J to make a copy. And then for this last one, we're just going to come to image, canvas size. So I'm going to take my height to 2000 pixels and click OK. Now it's, it's just another way of using the crop tool. So I'm going to make sure that I have my layer selected, letter V on the keyboard for the move tool, and then just put this in place here. We have the obvious seam, so we're going to come over here to edit, transform, and this time we're going to flip it vertically. I'm going to zoom out just to make sure that I don't have any seams in the middle here. I'm going to grab that top one, shift, grab the bottom one, command the letter E to merge them. Now you can see when you zoom out that you have this kind of circle going on here. Again, just like with the image pattern, just as long as you don't mess with the edges, if you want to come in and change some of this stuff here, you can do that. It's not really going to make much of a difference, especially when you have this in lettering and other objects. Um, but if you're using it as a background, maybe you might want to come in and do some cloning. So I'm going to come in with the clone stamp, hold down the option key, click just somewhere that I want to copy and just start painting out some of this stuff. And you can see how much easier this is when you have these similar textures next to each other. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it like this. Maybe I'll color in some of this side, uh, but I'm going to leave it like that. And I'm going to come over here to edit, define pattern. And this is our seamless. So if you're interested in learning how to create your own metallic textures from scratch, click on the link up on the screen right now. And that's going to take you to a full playlist of all metallic textures for Photoshop. And if you come back next week, I'm going to show you how to use this pattern right here to make a textured leopard print Photoshop brush. Until next time, thanks for watching.